My team does a great job in like all the cards. Like nobody has like, like you see like a diamond player or like an end player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like what? I've never gotten like a T Mac in uh, my. Team. Oh, like, we gotta change that. It's just so hard to get T Mac because it's like everybody wants them. Right. Like, oh, in the last year, somebody. I played somebody on my team. He had T Mac in, and he was just killing it. Well, you can get some easy baskets here. You need that board. A stunning view of the moon over the location tonight in Dallas, Texas. Hello, and as we approach the playoffs, let's now take a look at what is shaping up in the West. Take a look at the map. Right now, if the playoffs started, they would have the seventh seed. And, of course, there's the Suns. They're looking to turn it around down at the bottom of the conference now. And right now for Phoenix, they're going to stumble towards the finish line this season with the playoffs nowhere near a possibility. And you have to wonder just how different this team will look next season from players to possibly coaches, maybe every level of the organization. So the opening lineup for the Suns. Sharich and Aiton at the four and the five. Rubio and Booker, they're the backcourt. And it's Oubre in at the three spot. And for Dallas, inside of the four and the five, Porzingis and Powell. Luka Doncic out there with Curry. And it's Hardaway in at the three, the small forward. And Greg, as many expected, Porzingis getting a huge deal from Dallas to keep him a man for a long time. Mavs feel he can be better than he was before the injury. Love the idea of pairing him long term with Doncic. Sign him to a lengthy and sizable deal to be the core of their future. Powell kicks to Porzingis. It's hauled in by the Suns. And here we go. Sharich, the fast break chance. And no good to start the night, missing his first attempt there. Now the feed to Curry. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. It goes on Devin Booker. And you don't ever want to get into the habit of letting the offense get to the rim. Brent, at this point, perennial contenders sometimes coast through the final games of the regular season. Any danger that they can't get that right button or flip the switch and get back into gear? When you hear analysts say that the playoffs are all Take about matchups. Take a break. They are Two exactly shots. right. We, you and I matchups. talked about this, Kevin, several years ago about the time. going into the playoffs. Teams don't have to be hot. You don't have to be 10 and 2 in the last 12 games for your playoffs because all of a sudden, if you're matched up against a team that's owned you all year long, your chances of winning that series are very, very slim. So uh, it, it becomes just let's get in and let's find out who we're playing and then we'll get to work. And both free throws good for Curry. At this point, you might as well go ahead and chalk up the points when he's at the free throw line. Pretty much automatic. Tipped away. Powell with the steal. Donjic with it. Guarded now by Rubio. Let's it go from 14. And Donjic gets it to go. And he's got a good handle. Excellent body control. Donjic is a threat to pull up from anywhere. Rubio, the pass to Sharich. He dishes it to Oubre. Bangs home the trifecta. And he likes to get in a rhythm early. Nice triple. For Dallas, they've gone one of three for the field to start this one so far. Doncic kicks to Porzingis. Back to Doncic. Pass to Powell. Six on the shot clock. Curry dishes to Hardaway. 
It's over Oubre, and there's Hardaway. That's good on the assist by Curry. Uh, a little bit of breathing room, and Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to look right to the rim. Rubio outside. Charge outside. The pass to Oubre, and here is Ayton. Guarded by Hardaway. And it's Ayton missing. A lot of defenders choose to just back up off of him when he's in that tight, try to avoid the end one, and this time they're not backing off. Anjic passes to Hardaway. Porzingis against Sharich. Porzingis kicks to Kirk. A three-pointer, no good. Suns trail by three. To the middle, here's Booker. That one's in, his first bucket of the game. He's one for two. Uh, he looks to score all the time, and easy ones there for Booker. Interesting that Phoenix has gone through all these different iterations since the loss of Hall of Famer Steve Nash, but this young core potentially coming together where they've bookended their front court and their back court with Aiton and Booker. Boy, he is looking confident. Love how they're using him so far. Yeah, right now I don't see any let up, GA. I think he's going to just keep putting his foot on that gas pedal tonight. Pulls up on the wing. And it's Phoenix with the rebound. Well, Brent looking at the Suns' future. Aiton's development could really determine how far they run. I think it's not all on his shoulders, but certainly as a big guy out there, to have a presence on a nightly basis and some consistency is the challenge for DeAndre Ayton. He has all the physical tools and by all accounts has the work ethic to go along with it. And Dallas calls their first time out of the game. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldrich. Thanks, Kevin. Rick Carlisle and I did speak a few minutes ago. He said one of the key points defensively will be trying to limit the production of DeAndre Ayton, adding it's rare to see a player of his size and athleticism. And then you add in his shooting touch, he's a handful. It makes the defense take very difficult choices. Kevin? Thank you, David. And it's a completely new group on the floor for the Mavericks. And the Suns here with a different look. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for DeAndre. Kaminsky comes in for Sharich. Bridges, he's checked in for Kelly Oubre. And it's Carter in for Ricky Rubio. Wright finds Brunson. Pocket six. Carter pulls it in. Phoenix leading by three. One fifty-three left to play here in the first. And the rejection by Cauley Stein. And Cauley Stein in great position to reject that shot. Now, here's Bridges. Not a lot of room. And it's Carter missing. Well, the D really getting away with one there. No one on him. And that's going to be good nine out of ten times. And plenty of contact on the shot. So, two free throws coming up. And Phoenix gets called for the foul. The Mavericks shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. And their success rate on the season, right around 77%. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. The first free throw is good. Brent, so many state-of-the-art arenas being built. Which feature do you think is most important? Oh, the hot dog machine. What are uh, we doing, right? Popcorn, right? And the next popcorn. Right. What else, and Kevin? The popcorn. Yeah, you right nachos. I love nachos. Okay. You love nachos. What else? I mean... What else could we go with there? Ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah, That's right? a big because, one. Because uh, when you're done with all that other stuff, you've got to somehow kind yep. of coat your stomach. Yep. We Was this basketball bad. related or do we go somewhere else? All with a part of the whole conversation. Oh, I think we covered it. <laughs> the Suns have gone four for nine from the field to start this game off. Jerome passes to Kaminsky. Over to the wing. Here's Jerome. 
Guarded by Wright. Sinks the three-pointer. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just a great ball movement. Pass to Kleba. Kicks it to Cauley Stein. Now here's Brunson. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Here's Wright. The dish to Cauley Stein. Carter pulls it in. I'm not going to see that very often. The defense in the vicinity, but still, he's not one to blow layups. Carter can't get that one to fall. Average trail by four. Here's Brunson. Terrific assist. A nice finish. Solid play all around. When the player gets a feel for that floater, it can really make things tough on defenders. You're just not sure how to guard them and where your point of commitment is. Six second difference between the shot and game clock. Out to the wing. Jerome passes to Bridges. That three off the mark. And here is Wright. From outside the arc. That shot misses. And still a close game as the first quarter comes to a close. Suns ahead, up by two. And we'll get the second quarter underway on the other side of this break. Chris Stapps Porzingis grew up in... converting deep in the post. You're uh, mocking the floor with me right now. I see it. I see it. The last two Miami tournaments have been super competitive. And a lot of people, you know, were, were competing. We'll see something in the future. Watching tournament is crazy. Yeah, it's really cool. Fifty thousand dollars for it. Uh, yeah. And then Hardaway. Oh, uh, Penny. I definitely want to love the shack though. Oh. 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 Okay. All right. That's it. That's the payback. That's fell. We're good. We're good. We can, the game can end. We're good. Tell. He thought more space, but the defender was right there. So get the win here. Good game. Good game. Good game, man. I like it. I like it. You know what? Um, if you want, you can put your gamer tag out there for the world and go play this man. He knows what he's doing. the Connecticut Sun in this one as they go up against the Atlanta Dream. Uh, alongside Tim Swartz and Brian Vanifatemi, I'm Blake Suniga. Thanks for joining us. Well, the WNBA plays a 34-game regular season. Uh, what do you guys think can be learned from a season of that duration? Well, for one, it allows players to get more rest during the season. You don't see those brutal back-to-backs like you do in the NBA. And that's got to feel good for the players, guys, because more rest usually means less injury. And that's got to make the players and the coaches happy. Although, as a fan, selfishly, I would like to see more WNBA moves. But that's only because I love the game. 
You know, I think Hayes still doesn't get the credit for how good she is. An underrated talent. Hayes makes a good team a great team. She doesn't care about being famous. She just wants to be respected for balling. The first free throw is good. Yeah, I think you're completely right. When you think of her abilities, she's the perfect role player. Yeah, Tiffany serves as the eternal sidekick. You know, the perfect centerpiece for a team. And it's easy to understand why you win games with Hayes. She's just different. Now here's Thomas. Williams. It's Shakina Strickland on the wing. Shot clock at five. From 18 feet away, it's hauled in by Williams. She had all the space she needed, but just could not find the bottom of the bucket. Yeah, she read how that shot was going to come off the rim perfectly, and that can make up for any height disadvantage. Now here's Thomas. Pass to Jones. Here's Thomas. She's guarded by Williams. Thomas right side. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get it off in time. Atlanta with the ball. Montgomery outside. Pass to McCautry. Now Breland. Tiffany Hayes for three. Rebounded by John Quell Jones. Here's Thomas. Williams. He's guarded by Hayes. And Williams gets it to go. Taking it inside. Williams, she really doesn't let defenders get in her way. Determined to get the two points. Now Montgomery. Right side, Williams. Montgomery. He gets it in there. Yeah, late reaction for the defense. She's always going to convert that. Well, you look at the strengths of this Atlanta Dream Team, and it starts with Tiffany Hayes. Pairing her up with McCautry, the clear core of the Dream. Now here's Williams. Back to Thomas. Pass to Jones. To the paint. Stolen by Jessica Breland. The dream on the fast break. I don't think hustle is really ever in question with Hayes because her energy is pretty much always fully charged. As you said, the wing pair of Hayes and McCautry make for a fearsome duo. Yeah, the team looks so dangerous when both are healthy and on the floor. And these two just provide so much in terms of playmaking and rebounding. And they're as talented a wing pair as we have in the entire league. She must have a lot of confidence thinking she can make it from all the way back there. I think maybe the coach has got to get in her ear and tell her just get better shots when you're out there. Such a grinder, always doing the dirty work on the offensive glass. That's what she brings to the table. Thomas outside. Pass to Strickland. Six to shoot. From deep. And the ball out of play. The Dream will have it. Here's Bentley. First quarter of play and just over three and a half minutes in. To the inside. Coffee. Another shot. That shot off the mark. And it's the Sun taking it the other way. Here's Holmes. And the ball out of play. The Dream will have it. Where was she going with that pack? I have no clue. That, that's awful. That's just giving it away. 
Atlanta leading. Pass to Gulich. Sykes. Here's Billings. He can't get it to go. Jones with it. No scoring yet from her, but that's likely to change. Or if you complete all of the historic spotlight sim challenges from the Eastern Conference, you will get a Western Conference historic spotlight and the Western spotlight sim, then you will get spotlight. Galaxy Opal, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Gerard. Combine Hakeem Olajuwon's Opal. And the James Harden Opal, in addition to the free Pink Diamond Career Highlights Kobe Bryant card that you can get now in my team, and you will get Galaxy Opal Kobe Bryant. A worthy reward for that have come through and defeated all 300 Spotlight and Historic Spotlight challenges. Spotlight Sim and Historic Spotlight Sims, don't forget, hashtag Spotlight Sim on Twitter and tag NBA 2K underscore my team. You can get current and historic now NBA players into the Hey everyone, and welcome to the WNBA on UK Sports. In this game, we'll see the Seattle Storm going up against the Indiana Fever. From the 2K booth with Brian Banifatemi and Tim Swartz, I'm Blake Suniga. Thanks for coming along. And allowing freedom is one aspect of coaching. Tim, do you think allowing leeway is best when it comes to offense? Yes. Let your best players just play. The IQ of these players is so high. They can run sets on their own. Now, end of game situations, out of timeout situations, sure, drop a play. But a coach should let the best players in the world do their thing. I'm in the middle, all right? Now, a structured offensive system greatly helps your team. It should be a partnership between the staff and the talent. Always up for a challenge because Clark loves to improve her game, and really, she wants to get better every day. Now, here's Wheeler. On the wing, Kelsey Mitchell. 4-3! Tasha Howard with the rebound. Now here is Stewart. She's covered closely. Pass to Bird. From way back. Can't hit that one. And so the Fever will take it the other way. Here's Wheeler. Good work defensively by Brianna Stewart. Lloyd with it. Guarded now by Laney. Here's Howard. The Fever pull it in. And they could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Yeah, too many empty possessions. I mean, it's simple. They need points. Still scoreless after four shots. They need a bucket. Stewart. The shot off that time. Great D that time from Candace Dupree. Wheeler with it. And there's a whistle. It's going to be on Stewart. That is her first foul of the game. Now Mitchell. Outside Wheeler. Pass to Dupree. Five to shoot. Back to Wheeler. 
slow start. Five straight misses out of the gates. Shoots and misses. Three shots all come up empty. And that one drops. Dropping dimes. Bird has incredible vision and feel. She sees the whole court. The fever trailing. Well, one thing that makes Sue Bird special is her consistency. In each of her first 16 years in the league, Bird has averaged double-digit scoring figures and, and only has missed a handful of games. Timeout called the Fever. So reliable, Bird's consistency is a calming force on teams. She's even getting better with age. I agree, Blake. Uh, during her age 37 season in 2018, Bird set career highs in three-point shooting and assists. Basketball, just over two and a half minutes played so far. Outside Wheeler. And there's a whistle. That's going to go on Brianna Stewart. That'll be her second foul of the game. Here's a Chanwa. Mitchell outside. Pass to Laney. Achanwa. Shot clock at six. Dupree up top. Over Langhorn. Dupree gets the bucket. The mid-range jumper, it's a very high percentage shot for her when she has that much room to get it off. Bird outside. And here is Lloyd. Defended by Achanwa. It's Jewel Lloyd with the drive. So the whistle blows on the shot. Two free throws for the contact there. It's on Kelsey Mitchell. You know, off the dribble, few better than Jewel Lloyd. The lightning quick first step puts defenders in a bind. What a special season 2018 was for Jewel Lloyd. In her fourth season, Lloyd made her first WNBA All-Star game, finishing top 10 in the league in minutes and three-pointers made. And the first one at the line is good. Yeah, and that great season continued in the playoffs for Jewel Lloyd. A key cog for Seattle in the finals run. Yeah, but, but Lloyd scored 12 points per game during the WNBA Finals sweep for the Storm. Blending well with fellow stars, Brianna Stewart, Sue Bird, helping Seattle to their first championship in eight seasons. And guys, do you think individual defense is getting easier to measure with player tracking and advanced stats, or is it still mostly about the eye test? Well, at the end of the day, I think the eye test will always be more valuable than what any stat or graph will tell you. And look, I'm all for analytics helping the game, but I just think defense is one of those things you have to see to believe. Yeah, I agree, Brian. I think uh, really defensive rating is fine for measuring team defense, but as far as individual defense, we're still a ways away. When you start bringing up defensive win shares and steal percentages, most fans just don't know what you're talking about. Howard, that's good. But you like to give maybe a degree of difficulty bonus there for Howard. Great concentration to put it through the hoop. The drive by Tiffany Mitchell. And no good. Good D by Natasha Howard. To the middle. Langhorn. And she banks in the layup. An attentive player who sees the floor well. Clark really understands how to distribute the rock. Pass to Mitchell.
MC in the neighborhood. Here's the schedule. Buckle up, because on Saturday, okay. my points earned from each game play in the distance around the track. It's a race to the finish line. Okay. Get a full spot and earn with double rep 5v5 happening all day long the double rep continues all day tuesday but this time it's in the back thursday reach the castle walls and joust nba legends to rep up and earn prizes thou shall have all day to play now let's check out all of our new legends in 2k20 good work out there i'll be back later with your top plays Tonight, we'll see the Chicago Sky as they go up against the New York Liberty. Along with Tim Swartz and Brian Benefitemi, I'm Blake Suniga, and we're happy to have you along for another great game. Well, the WNBA recently made changes to not just their postseason format, but their regular season format as well. Do you guys like these changes? Well, I think it's good for the league, Blake. You know, I like how teams now play 18 games against their opposing conference instead of 12. Now, that allows fans to see more of those cross-conference matchups that they may have been craving. Also, it could help some rivalries develop, which to me is always fun. Yeah, and as far as in-conference, teams used to play five games against two teams and four games against the remaining three teams. Now in this new format, teams play four games against one team and three games against the remaining four teams. More balance. Third pick in the 2018 WNBA Draft, the Shields went on to have a terrific rookie campaign. Puts it up from 12. A nice shot by Durr. They can't afford to give her that kind of look. Well, it came off a good screen, but still, as a defender, you have to fight over the top of it. And you need some help as well. Now here's Vandersloot. Pass to Lavender. To Shields. And Tina Charles is going to pick up the foul. And that's her first foul. On defense, New York. Inside. A nice shot by DeShields. Well, if there's somebody open on the court with the same jersey on, Vandersloot will find her incredible court vision. Pass to Nurse. Back to Boyd. Now Zawi B. Nurse outside. Clock at six. Launches a three. Rebound Chicago. To the inside. Quigley. And that comes off the assist by Courtney Vandersloot. You know, it's so important for Quigley to score inside. Why? Scoring close to the hoop opens up her long-range game. Now here's Boyd. Here's Nurse. He hangs. Boyd can't get it to go. What is she thinking right there? Only need one move on your way to the rim, not two. Outside quickly. Vandersloot outside. Pass to Dolson. Good day. Good day. Shoots over Zowie B. And it's Dolson missing. A real defensive lapse there. She's not a player you can leave open for a jump shot. They're lucky she didn't punish him there. And just under two and a half minutes elapsed here in the first. Allie Quigley drives in. Her shot is good, making her a perfect two for two from the floor. They're shooting 80% so far. Obviously it's early, but offensively they're looking great. 
Well, the New York Liberty, a marquee franchise in the WNBA. One of the chartered teams in the league, but unfortunately, they're still looking for their first title. Pass to Charles, and they double up Tina Charles. Here's Nurse. Another miss, one for four here early. And it's good for two. Where was the box out? Some easy second chance points. Those kinds of mistakes on the glass will kill a team. Now here's Lavender. Right side to Shields. That one falls coming off Stephanie Dolson's feed. And with the Liberty, as you said, that first championship, something they are searching for. New York has come close several times. They've played in four WNBA finals, and this team is desperate for a banner, but it just hasn't been in the cards for them. Shooting two. The first free throw is good. A coming into the WNBA with incredible experience. At the point guard position, Kia Nurse was one of the stars for Team Canada in the 2016 games. It's both from the strike. Well, running the floor is a big part of basketball. Which WNBA player do you guys think are the best in the open court? I gotta go with Angel McCautry. Great athleticism and just feels comfortable pushing the rock. Can play in control despite a fast pace. That's the key, guys. How about Tiffany Hay? She has such an impressive fluidity to her game and knows how to use her quickness to make the most of open court opportunities. Zowie B gets the bucket. She's got a great read of where that miss was going, and that enabled her to be the first player to it and get the put back. Now here's Williams. Pass to Faulkner. Sweet little floater. The teardrop is one of those, oh no, oh no, oh yes, shots. New York trailing here. Hartley outside. Here's Allen. 